Sam Newman, Sam Newman has caught controversy yet again for defending Eddie Maguire, who joked about drowning Caroline Wilson. I work as an ambassador for Our Watch, White Ribbon and the Safe Steps Family Violence Response Centre. Male violence is a leading cause of death and disability for women under 45 in Australia. My sister Nikita was stabbed to death by her partner in January last year with a meat cleaver. She was 23. How will politicians and the media play a better role in bringing about long overdue cultural shifts so tragedies like what happened to my family are not normalised? Steve Price, I'll start with you. I happen to know all of the people you mentioned there, Sam, um, Eddie and Caroline Wilson very well. And uh, Eddie apologised immediately. Um, if you listen to that broadcast in context, um, it was a bunch of blokes laughing about things that they shouldn't have laughed about. Um, and when they, it was brought to their attention that they'd said those things, all of them apologised. I think far too much was then made of it. As for Sam's comments, who happens to be a very good friend of mine on the footy show, I think he should regret those comments. I don't think he should have gone back in to defend his great friend Eddie. But I think too much was made of what was originally uh, a joke on a football show. Dan Batum. First, can I say that's absolutely heartbreaking to hear about your sister and I'm uh, terribly sad for your family and for everybody left behind. And there are way too many Australians who have this experience as part of their family and, and social worlds and it's devastating to hear that and I'm so sorry. And it's one of the reasons why we have to take this seriously and it's one of the reasons why we have to look at the cultural attitudes around the different treatment of women and the disadvantaged treatment of women in our society. Because what you see as, you know, jokes made by a bunch of blokes, you know, from the position of being one of those blokes who's probably been in on some of those jokes, I see as a woman who is part of a social world where, you know, violence is... I hope you're not suggesting I've been on... You know, I'm, not, I'm not... I'm not... I'm saying I'd that you're... I'd like you just that to you retract are creating, that because I would never I'm saying say that you like have that. just described them as a bunch of blokes joking around and, That's you know, making... And making apologies. Yes, Steve. That's a fact. Yes, That's Steve. what they were doing. Yes. Well, don't, don't tar me not, with their brush. Uh, it's not... Please. It's not funny. Don't tar me with their brush, Steve, please. Steve, do you know what you're doing? Do you have un any understanding what you're doing? This man has given us an extremely upsetting story about something that's happened. Yes, I can hear and as you, well as you are can. defending yourself in a context where we have to have a conversation about cultural attitudes that treat women differently. And you cannot create paradigms where there are blokes who have this kind of behaviour and we are just looking at woman, women who live who get in the result things. of cultural attitudes that treat women differently. Men can and be this just is as the upset situation. About these Steve, can, uh, well, I'll Steve, give you a chance to respond in a moment. But, uh, can, Thank Van, you. Van... You're proving my point very excellently about the attitudes that create these kinds of problems. The challenges are multifaceted. One, we have to stop creating these, these binary men are this, women are this, masculinity is this, femininity is this, men have high status, women have low status. You can speak down to these people but these people are not allowed to speak back up. That we can make jokes and it's all jokes and oh yeah they apologised and that's fine but on the receiving end is the ludicrous proportion of women yeah. who do I endure violence. I think you're violence. just being hysterical. It's probably my ovaries making me do it, Steve. <laughs> OK. But we have to... OK, also... sorry, I, Dan, I'm, I'd like to hear from the rest of the panel because I think um, it's getting a bit too heated on this side and I think the public can make up their own minds about that. Uh, Tanya Plibersek. Um, I'm also very sorry to hear about your sister. And I think the Im important thing to say about our public debate is it has shifted for most people to a place where making jokes about violence against women is, is not funny and it's not acceptable. And I think if the same blokes had made the same joke 10 years ago, it would have received a lot less attention. Um, I, I, uh, and I, I think that's a big step forward. I think it's very important that both um, uh, Bill Shorten and Malcolm Turnbull have spoken up uh, against violence against women but also about the, the casual joking about it because that's the, that's the first step. Uh, in fact, Malcolm Turnbull says not all, viol uh, not all um, 
you know, uh, disrespect of women ends up as violence against women, but all violence against women starts with disrespect. And that kind of joking is the foundation for that. It's um, normalising, as you say. It's making it seem uh, less horrific than it really is. I, I, I see at the time that um, commentators like Steve and me and Eddie Maguire, you must own what you've said, for starters. You must own what you've said, and if you think you should apologise, apologise. Eddie is a friend of mine too, but I think I've said on air, on Sunrise, he should have... Uh, his first apology was only half an apology. When Tony Windsor said those terrible things during the election about, about the Vietnam War veteran, he should have owned up to it and said, I, 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 I said a terrible thing. Um, but as for Maguire having to resign or whatever it was, I wouldn't have agreed with that because you've got... You've got uh, Bill Shorten and Malcolm Turnbull still go on Alan Jones' show, and Alan Jones, the guy, got up and said that Prime Minister Julia Gillard should be put in a chaff bed and drowned at sea, which is a dreadful thing to say, you know. And at the time, he said, oh, and I don't think he ever apologised for that, ever. Just sticking to um, the context of the question, uh, Sam Newman, of course, brought back into this and continued the attack on Caroline Wilson, um, saying to her directly on television, you're an embarrassment, you become an embarrassment... Um, you'd still be talking if you were underwater, even if you were underwater. I, I, didn't, now, I didn't hear in the context see... In the context of saying yeah. earlier that um, they might as well drown her, um, yeah. what did you think of those remarks? I, I didn't hear, I didn't hear um, Sam's comments. Okay. I'm, I'm not a footy show watcher. All right, George Brandis. Um, can I thank you for sharing that experience and that family tragedy with us tonight? That must have taken a, a very great deal of courage. And, and I want to thank you for, for having the courage to bring that forward before a national audience. Um, this is... We've had a lot of party political argy-bargy tonight, but this is not a political issue. Uh, there is no controversy whatsoever, certainly between the political parties and, and the government and the alternative government, about the seriousness of this issue. Um, we were supported when Malcolm Turnbull, in one of his earliest acts as Prime Minister, announced the women's safety package last September, which was the inve investment of an additional $100 million um, uh, in women's safety programs. And I'm glad to say that the opposition was supportive of that measure and there were further measures in the budget in May uh, in relation to this matter. I think there is a greater community visibility of the problem than there was before. That's in due in part to the work and advocacy of people like uh, Rosie Batty. Um, it is something that I think we have had a beneficial change of... Uh, a, a, a cultural change of community attitude so that what may have been acceptable in years gone by and passed for humour no longer does, as we've seen here tonight, and I think that's a good thing. George, can you also have one? to restore the $30 million cuts to okay. community legal centres All right, can well. I, I just quickly... Uh, we're, we're, we're out of time, we literally are. I just would quickly like to go back to Tarang. Uh, who asked the question in the first place. You heard the discussion, you heard how heated it got. Um, your thoughts, very briefly, before we go. Steve, I find some of the comments that you made rather offensive, considering that you're essentially sticking up for people who are making misogynist comments and passing them off as joking and banter. And then you said just moments ago that they were just having a joke and that it's been taken too far. Do you not see yourself in a position of influence, having the ability to normalise views around gender equality? And if so... How would you go about doing that? I was stating a fact that they were having a joke and it got out of hand and they apologised. I think we can go too far with this. I too feel very sorry for your personal circumstances, but we can go too far in taking someone like a, a media personality and stringing them up. I mean, Eddie Maguire apologised. That should have been the end of the matter. I don't think we needed to drag ourselves down the track any further once he did that. OK, we're going to have to leave.